Hey, guess what? We're back here. We got an entire film crew here. We got an audio set. This is a green screen on a virtual set. Welcome to the metaverse. That's not true. My name's Neil. Welcome to uh, Heart and Soul. This is Romans week 13. We're really finishing up the end of Romans 9. And we're going to cover all of Romans chapter 10. We got a lot to get to. Just stop chit-chatting right now. Stop it. You're distracting me. I need to focus. Uh, I have some notes here, and uh, we're going to put some notes up here on the screen for you as well. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 and 31. It says, what are we going to say? That Gentiles who didn't pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. This one gets really tricky. This is like, it's like double talk. You're like, I don't know which one. What? Where, what? This is a little tricky, but I'm going to simplify this for you really easily. The Gentiles found righteousness, and they weren't really even looking for it. But Israel was working for righteousness, and they weren't able to attain it. So Gentiles really means not Jews. So Gentiles is any other nation or, or group of people who are not Christ followers. So Jewish people and Gentile people... They got to righteousness different ways, and the, the Jewish people were like, hey, I'm going to work really hard for that. And the Gentiles were like, they weren't even looking for it, but they, they were able to obtain it. That's what this scripture is actually meaning, is, is they, the, the Jewish people viewed their performance as more important than Jesus' performance. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have Jesus doing what, what we need as opposed to it relying on me. So Romans chapter 9, verse 32 and 33 says, They stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it was written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. What is the stumbling stone? What is this rock of offense? Really, really simply, the fact that Jesus is the Messiah, he's the only way to salvation, that tripped people up. The Jewish people, they couldn't handle it. It was like, wait a minute, so not my works, not my efforts, not my striving. I can only attain salvation and righteousness through Jesus. That was really, really tricky for them. They're like, wait a minute, how dare you? And the reason why the Jewish people would say like, how dare you is because for someone who is working really hard to attain their salvation, for somebody to just get it by grace was offensive to them. They're like, wait a minute, bro. Like, I've been working really hard. I've been working my tail off. And you're just going to all of a sudden just get salvation and righteousness by faith and through grace. They just couldn't handle that. That's why this was this stumbling stone. And the Jewish people had a really difficult time really accepting that Jesus is the Messiah because of pride. They'd worked so hard. They've really kept these laws and these commandments and they just didn't know how to do it. There are a lot of Christians, we do the exact same thing. Just be honest for a second. Some of us, we're like professional. We're like, we could go pro. If there was like a national football league for Christians, but it was like national Christian league, some of us would go pro because we think we've got everything under control. We've forgotten the only way to heaven is Jesus. It's not on anything you and I have done. We got to put our faith in Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 4, it just says, Christ is the end of the law. Like, wait, what? It's really clear that, that Jesus gives the law everything that it required. Jesus took care of everything in the moral law. He took care of everything in the ceremonial law in his sacrifice. Like he fulfilled every scripture. The reason why in a tabernacle they would have to bring a sacrifice, something would have to die in order to have sins forgiven in the Old Testament. And now Jesus comes and he fulfills all of that. Jesus is the end of the law. Big moment here in verse 9 through 13. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is massive because confessing with our mouth, the, the, the Greek definition of that, it means to say the same thing. It means that I'm agreeing with you. Think about this. Remember, we're talking like a, like a courtroom setting. This would be the same as sitting in a courtroom and agreeing out loud that Jesus is Lord, saying, yeah, Jesus is God Almighty. That is what confessing with our mouth means. Verse 9 says, if we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. 
Do you notice the Apostle Paul doesn't mention the cross here at all? He just mentions that Christ was raised from the dead. We, we don't need to believe in the cross. We need to make sure we are believing in an empty tomb, that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. We need to believe in the resurrection. In verse 9, it says confession comes before belief. But then in verse 10, it says belief comes before confession. It's like, wait a minute, like Paul, did Paul make a mistake here? Like, honestly, ask yourself that. The answer is no. He was doing things for two reasons. He knew who his audience was. Remember, he's talking to Jewish people and Gentiles. And so the first reason is he is reaffirming an Old Testament law. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14, it says, The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. See how it says that? Wait, it's in your mouth and in your heart. They confessed and believed. That's how the first portion of this scripture says it, because Paul knows that he is not going to contradict the Old Testament law. That Jesus came to fulfill it. But the second thing that he did is he doubled down on this, and he also said, listen, I'm going to stress to you that for a Gentile's perspective, for someone who is not raised Jewish, that we first believe and then we confess that belief. Now, this is huge. He's covering all of his bases. Confession is the inevitable result of believing. Confession is an outward manifestation of what we believe internally. Think about it. If you believe something in your heart, in your mind, will, emotion, in your soul, in your gut, if you believe it in your heart, you're eventually going to say it out loud. If anything about anything that you believe, you believe something about your team or something about a person or something about a situation, you're eventually going to say that out loud. So belief starts here in our heart and then we confess out of our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Romans 10, 15 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is a, a pretty famous scripture, and a lot of people hear this and they go, okay, I, I understand hearing and hearing by the word of God, but like, why are we doubling down on that? Paul knew who his audience was. Back then, like first century Christians, the way they got their information, the way they heard our scripture is not by reading it. They didn't have it on paper. They had it by hearing someone read it. So hearing is how they heard the Word of God. Hearing is how they believed the Word of God. They learned it mostly from someone else who read it out loud. That is why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The last verse in chapter 10, verse 21, says, All day long I've held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Now, the word disobedient, it really just means not allowing ourselves to be persuaded. That, that's disobedient. And the word contrary means that we're going to declare against something. That's, that's pretty like harsh. What God is saying is, I want you to remember this visual. God is literally saying, all day long I've held out my hands, his hands of grace, his hands of mercy, towards people who are dishonest, who are obstinate, who are set against or declared against and a disobedient people, people who just will not say yes to Jesus. And God is still saying, listen, I'm going to stand here with my hands outstretched. Remember the, the, the story of the, the prodigal son. God the Father is standing on that front porch with his arms out wide, saying, listen, I'm ready for you to come back. I know you're disobedient. I know you're obstinate. I know you're declaring against me. I know you're doing your own thing, but I'm still here with grace and mercy. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that spoke this to, to Paul and he was written inspired by the Holy Spirit because we need to be reminded that God is a loving, caring God. Yes, he's full of justice, but he's also full of mercy. 